kidnapper on the run. Police say this is what he looks like. The bizarre abduction and release of a nine-year-old boy. And why police fear what will happen next. Swamp, soaked, and flooded. Record-breaking rains to our south. The same storm that's brought so much severe weather and flooding is heading in our direction. Flood watches are up. I'll tell you how much rain you can expect and when it moves out. And a local couple takes on a medical giant and wins. It should have never happened in the first place. Sales halted of a surgical device that may spread cancer. And Dr. Malika Marshall shows us why the couple's fight isn't over yet. Live from our studios in Boston, WBZ News at 5 starts right now. Hunting for a kidnapper. Rockland police right now are searching for this man in the sketch. They say he abducted a nine-year-old boy and then let him go. Good evening to you. Thanks for being with us. I'm Jonathan Elias. And I'm Paula Evan. Now, the boy wasn't harmed, but the kidnapping has parents and police understandably concerned. Investigators say the man abducted the boy right in front of his school, then dropped him off in Abington. Christina Hager is live in Rockland tonight. Christina? Paula, police say they've done a lot of legwork on this case today. They say they took the boy for a ride along the route. He says he took with this abductor yesterday. They say they have hundreds of leads, but at this point, still no suspect in custody. Officers went door to door in Abington and Rockland, handing out copies of the sketch of the child abductor they're looking for. Pretty scary. It must have been pretty scary for that young boy, too. Police spent hours working on this with the nine-year-old boy. They say his level of detail makes them confident in his story. He gives a description of where the shifter is on the column, not on the, on the uh, console. Um, so those little details, the way he grabbed the handle as opposed to grabbing it from underneath over the top. And now police have mapped the exact route of the abduction. Now checking with businesses along the way for surveillance video. The boy says he mistakenly got in the man's car during pickup at his elementary school at the end of the day Tuesday. Rockland School Superintendent John Retchless. We do have school employees supervising the pickup area in the afternoon. The boy said he thought it was his dad's friend. He said he drove to neighboring Abington, where he remembers being on Lake Street. When he asked why they were here, this wasn't the way to his father's home in Hull. That's when he says the man abruptly told him to get out. He walked through this park to the Abington Police Department and told them everything. My biggest fear is, and the fear of our detective unit, is that this was sort of a trial run for somebody that may have wanted to kidnap or to uh, molest a child. That's why the added security at the boys' school today, a review of safety lessons and parents talking to their children. I basically told her, um, you know, that the police were going to be here and just not to talk to anybody she doesn't know. And um, it's just very scary. A few more details on the description of that suspect. Short salt and pepper hair in the front and what police call a tail, longer hair in the back. He wore a black hoodie sweatshirt with white letters saying USN on the front and the car. It's a white four-door sedan. In Rockland, Christina Hager, WBZ News. Jonathan Paula, back to you. Very scary. Christina, thank you. And the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children says there are five key points parents should pass along to kids when it comes to safety. Always take a friend with you when walking, biking, or standing at the bus stop. Say no if anyone you don't know offers a ride. Get away and yell, this isn't my mom or dad, if someone tries to take you somewhere or follows you. Never leave school before the regular school day ends, and never take shortcuts or walk through alleys to get to or from school. You can find all of this information on our website, cbsboston.com. Some breaking news now just coming into our newsroom. The second floor of Boston City Hall is buckling. Look at these pictures. You can see all the tiles coming right up off the floor. Bobby Sisk is joining us live at City Hall with more on this. Bobby? What's going on now? We have Jonathan here on the second floor just outside of the registry division, and thankfully today this area was closed. Let's take a look here at the damage. We're going to zoom in and show you workers are now pulling these tiles away. What happens here, there were no injuries, and this was not a big structural problem with the building. The building was built in 1963, and there were no expansion joints. So every now and then, uh, according to the city spokesperson and to the uh, engineer we talked with, every now and then these tiles will crack 
and that's what happened here today. Again, there were people, would have been people passing through this area at this time this happened, uh, but these windows, there was no one lined up outside of them. This has happened three other times in the city hall building, and each time they just pull the tiles out and they go ahead and put them back in and replace them, which is what they're doing now. They're hoping to have this where workers who come here tomorrow will be able to get to the stairs to go down to the elevator there. We did ask the question, there was a lot of construction going on around city hall, including the government center T-stop, so was that related to this at all? And the the city says no it was not in fact there's probably two to three feet of concrete underneath this floor before the next floor and we were told that this building is structurally sound but again a bit of a scare here for workers who came by and saw this as the tile began to buckle here this afternoon we're going to continue uh, uh, here and find out more about what happened and we'll bring you updates as we get them i'm live at the government center bobby sisk wbz news back to you it's very unsettling all right bobby thanks so much we have more breaking news take a look these are pictures from baltimore where a giant sinkhole has opened up. Now, this hole swallowed part of the street there and about 10 cars. Our sister station reports the road collapsed onto the rail tracks you can see below. Several streets are blocked off at this point. No reports, though, of any injuries. Wow, that's a big hole. Rain and a lot of it, and that is knocking on our door now. And the threat of wet weather has already canceled tonight's Red Sox game at Fenway Park, and our chief meteorologist, Eric Fisher, is here with the very latest. Eric? Hey there, Paula Jonathan. Good evening, everybody. A look at Fenway Tarp on the field here. They play a day-night doubleheader for tomorrow. I would say probably had better luck getting the game in tonight than they will tomorrow, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Here's the rainfall. You see that band that's going to right down through Baltimore, Inner Harbor area. That's why they're seeing the flooding. This extends all the way down to the deep south. Here at home, we've got the rain. It's very slow to move its way eastward. There's a lot of dry air in the atmosphere right around Boston and down toward the Cape. Rain should stay fairly light here through the evening. Heavier around Worcester County and down to Connecticut and New York. And that will be the case for the next several hours at least. Flood watches are out for Plymouth and Bristol counties as well as southern Worcester County. And again, the highest rain totals in Connecticut down to New York, they're going to have more significant flooding issues from this one. But as we watch this rain move in, the showers will become more steady overnight. The heaviest slug of rain late tonight and into tomorrow morning. So for the drive, there could be some thunder embedded in here, certainly some downpours and spots of poor drainage flooding. And I think even as we head into tomorrow afternoon, it's going to be very slow to move out and work its way to the east. Now for tonight, lower 40s, wet, the rain becoming more steady, and we'll have more of those issues for the morning. Now, the same storm system, we saw the tornadoes of the last couple of days, but in Florida, it is just stunning. A one in 500 year flood event. Look at some of the images here in Pensacola. Our own Danielle Niles took a look at just unbelievable situations happening all across the southeast. Historic rainfall sparked a devastating flooding in the Florida Panhandle and southern Alabama early Wednesday. Emergency crews used boats and high water vehicles for rescues where chest high water streamed into homes, forcing residents to seek shelter in their attics. Two major military bases were shut down along with many schools and businesses Wednesday. Roads no longer there were washed out by the flowing water, and two vehicles plummeted 40 feet as a section of scenic highway in Florida collapsed beneath them. There were over 16,000 lightning strikes in a 30-minute period just after midnight Wednesday, knocking out power to thousands, including the National Weather Service in Mobile, Alabama. Pensacola, Florida received over five and a half inches of rain in one hour, with rain gauges showing over 20 inches of rain in the past 24 hours, more than the entirety of Hurricane Ivan and Katrina. This same storm system is the one responsible for over 140 tornadoes since Sunday and at least 37 deaths in the south. Flood and flash flood watches and warnings are in effect up and down the east coast, all the way from Florida to right here at home in New England. Additional thunderstorms will be possible through tonight with the biggest threat of severe weather, including tornadoes, from the eastern Carolinas to eastern Virginia. Danielle Niles, WBZ News. This just in, new charges now against a state trooper involved in a car crash that killed a Carver mother and a grand jury just returned an eight-count indictment against John Basler. Investigators say it was September that Susan Matchy and her daughter Julia were returning from a Red Sox game when Basler hit them. Basler was off duty at the time, but police say his blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit. Among the new charges, two counts of motor vehicle homicide while operating under the influence of alcohol and two counts of manslaughter. Olga Roche may have resigned as the Department of Children and Families Commissioner, but tonight we know she is still working with the agency. Roche stepped down just yesterday after the recent deaths of three children. Katie Brace spoke to Governor Patrick about the decision to keep her on staff. 
he's got uh, 30 plus years of, uh, of depth in the field. Governor Deval Patrick defended his decision to keep the now former head of the Department of Children and Families on the payroll. Just yesterday, the governor announced Olga Roche's resignation as commissioner. The move came following top lawmakers' calls for her removal after three children under DCF supervision died. People have to understand who work there how important their job is and that no mistakes can be tolerated. The body of five-year-old Jeremiah Oliver Fitchburg was found by the side of the highway. Two other unrelated cases involved the deaths of two babies. There's nothing about the, uh, the commissioners uh, stepping down as commissioner that makes DCF stronger. It's about uh, uh, her inability to capture, as a leader, the confidence of the public and many uh, at the line step in order to, uh, to implement reforms. Governor Patrick says it would be worse for DCF, cutting Roche out of the agency altogether. He's in the middle of uh, working, helping us work through some of the reforms we've been, we've been doing. Um, so it's a little abrupt and unhelpful to DCF to simply cut that cord. It is unclear how much Roche will be paid. I reached out to Roche, who would not answer any questions. Katie Brace, WBC News. Katie, thank you. Well, it appears that this fire at Suffolk Downs was accidental. Flames tore through a building near the horse stables last night. As Michelle Roberts shows us, workers are confident that things will be ready for Saturday's start of the new racing season. It's a quiet morning for the horses at Suffolk Downs. They're resting up after a three-alarm fire broke out in a kitchen on the property around 5 o'clock last night. <laughs> Not one horse was injured, no people were injured, and that is just huge on a racetrack. So we're very fortunate and we're really looking forward to Saturday, our big day. Michelle Jeffrey is the safety coordinator. She says some horses were a little too close and moved while firefighters battled the blaze. We did, just as a precaution, just to be on the safe side. You know, you don't want the smoke coming down and on. The fire was contained to one building, but the damage is extensive. Well, the Revere Fire Department did an excellent job, and our horsemen and women did as well, and we're very excited for opening day on Saturday. Saturday could potentially be the last opening day if Suffolk Downs were to lose its bid for a casino license. We're pretty positive here. You know, we like to keep this industry going, so we're all rooting for it, and hopefully it'll, it'll keep going on. At Suffolk Downs, Michelle Roberts, WBZ News. A rabid raccoon goes on the attack, fighting three people, including two children. Hear from the man who fought off this animal. Plus, a healthcare giant takes action after concerns that this device could spread cancer. We hear from the local couple who pushed for the change. And this man's execution was botched. Tonight, investigators are trying to figure out exactly what went wrong. Closed captioning is brought to you by Luna. Right now at Luna, get an incredible 70% off carpet, hardwood, and laminate flooring. 877-241. Luna. Isn't it a good time to buy a Honda Accord? We don't call it the spring into a Honda sales event for nothing. What makes this Accord so special? Rear view camera, Bluetooth, Pandora compatibility, all standard. I'm not convinced. It's an IIHS 2014 top safety There's a bear behind you. <laughs> is not a drill. Get a great deal during the Spring into a Honda sales event. Now, at your Honda dealer. Looks can be deceiving. It's certainly true with furniture. Two items may appear to be the same, but are they? At Boston Interiors, all of the upholstered furniture is made in America. Each piece is crafted with high-grade American hardwood, reinforced block corners, and eco-friendly materials. So when you shop at Boston Interiors, you buy furniture that's great looking and long lasting. Visit Boston Interiors today and save during our spring home sale. The smarter you are about furniture, the more you'll love Boston Interiors. Just can't seem to escape another sneeze attack? You may be muddling through allergies. Don't get caught off guard. Try new Zyrtec Dissolve Tabs. Powerful allergy relief now in a tablet that starts dissolving instantly. New Zyrtec Dissolve Tabs.
Boston's must-see dance event of the season is Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Don't miss the world's most popular dance company at the City Ring Theater. May 1st through 4th only. For tickets, visit citycenter.org. Whether you're looking to advance your career or change your career path, Southern New Hampshire University has the online program to get you where you want to go. I knew where I wanted to go, and they had the best support system in place to get me there. I could actually apply everything that I was learning the next day. Southern New Hampshire University gave me the confidence to go further in my career. This is the learning experience I was hoping for. Fund your online graduate or undergraduate program today, and see yourself succeed at smhu.edu. WBZ News is sponsored by Sleepy's, the mattress professionals. A train derails and explodes in Lynchburg, Virginia. Thick black smoke poured from these rail cars carrying crude oil. More than a dozen cars derailed and three or four of them were breached. Police evacuated several buildings along the James River, but no reports of any injuries there. The White House says a botched execution of a convicted killer in Oklahoma fell short of humane standards. Officials say a cocktail of drugs used for the first time may not have worked. As Marley Hall reports, the governor is now calling for an independent review. Convicted murderer Clayton Lockett was scheduled to die Tuesday, and he did of a heart attack nearly an hour after authorities started a new three-drug lethal injection combination. Prison officials stopped the execution when Lockett began violently moving and mumbling after the second and third drugs were administered. There was some concern at that time that the, that the drugs were not having the effect. So the doctor observed the line and determined that the line had blown. Now Oklahoma's governor is asking the Department of Corrections to conduct a full review of the state's execution procedures. The review will determine whether or not the Department of Corrections follow the current protocol for executions. She also ordered a 14-day stay of execution for another inmate, Charles Warner, who was also scheduled to die yesterday. The executions of the two convicts had already been delayed as they tried to sue the state for refusing to disclose details about where the new execution drugs were obtained. Lockett's attorney says the state should have anticipated problems with the new untested lethal injection formula and is considering filing a lawsuit. Marley Hall, CBS News. But if the review there takes longer than 14 days, the governor will order another stay of execution. On Capitol Hill, the Senate just blocked a bill to raise the minimum wage. Republicans voted against the proposal to raise the minimum wage from $7.25 to $10.10 an hour. They say raising it would hurt businesses and kill job creation. Democrats did not expect this vote to pass, but they plan to use the measure as a campaign issue in the midterm elections. By preventing even a vote on this bill, they prevented a raise for 28 million hardworking Americans. They said no to helping millions work their way out of poverty. Senate Democrats are pushing legislation today that would cost as many as a million jobs in this country. Now, moderate Republicans are proposing a smaller wage increase, but so far, Democrats are not willing to compromise. But it's the true sign in Boston that even though the weather isn't cooperating, summer is right around the corner. In today's rain, the famous Boston Public Garden swans, Romeo and Juliet, return to their lagoon. Police and musicians led the parade that brought the duo back into the pond there. And Boston Mayor Marty Walsh was also on hand for today's ceremony. As soon as they walked out, they said, what is going <laughs> said, on here? Take people, us back. <laughs> I think you've got the wrong day. Back to Boca with those birds. <laughs> See, yeah. people not on a calendar. For goodness <laughs> sake, don't bother us until the sun comes out. A little rough, a little rough. Take a look at where we've been trading in a very small window for the past couple of days in Boston. Temperatures haven't moved between 41 and 45 degrees for 41 straight hours. 40s are lucky. That's your average high for early March. And we're going to do that for a little while yet through this evening and overnight before we'll finally break the trend heading into tomorrow. Here's the storm system that we have been tracking over the last couple of days. This is a 48-hour satellite loop, and what you'll notice is almost nothing changes. They've seen three feet of snow in South Dakota, by the way. We've had the tornadoes in the southeast, a tremendous flare-up of thunderstorms and flooding rain across Florida. And for us, 
We are now getting into the rainfall ourselves. You see it moving up the east coast. This is a trouble area, New York down to D.C. They're dealing with all sorts of flooding, some travel disruptions there. For us, we're looking at the rain starting to work its way in, especially Worcester County and into Connecticut. Boston area, North Shore, and down toward the Cape. There's a lot of dry air still in place here, so a lot of this is drying up before it hits the ground. Very light rainfall this evening. It will start to pick up overnight. Flood watches are out for Plymouth and Bristol counties, as well as southern Worcester County. Heaviest rainfall of all is Rhode Island, Connecticut, and back toward New York from this event. And most of this is poor drainage flooding. Most of the rivers should be able to take it fine. So look at the timing. We'll see this rain become more steady overnight and into tomorrow morning. The drive is going to be very slow for the commute. Could be a little bit of thunder. You see some of these yellows. That's indicative of some downpours. And there will be enough instability around. Lunchtime, still some showers, especially far eastern mass. And it's going to take a while for us to clear out. I think these showers are still going to be speckled about all the way until the evening before we dry up. So some of the headlines, the steadiest is late tonight and into tomorrow morning. It's a widespread three quarters to an inch and a half of total rainfall with poor drainage flooding possible. And windswept at the coast, especially the south coast, strong gusty winds around 30, 35 miles per hour. Not very comfortable conditions for us. So tomorrow morning, tracking the downpours, wind out of the southeast becoming more southerly as we head toward midday. Some thunder mixing into all of this. And during the afternoon, it's a little more scattered, few and far between, but still some showers in an isolated thunderstorm. And most towns get above 60 degrees, especially away from the water. 60s here inland, but as you work down toward the Cape and the islands, should stay in the 50s through the day. Now, as we go toward Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, very fast-moving weather sets, uh, pattern that's taking place. So as we head through Friday afternoon, a few showers, a few more are going to pop up on Saturday afternoon. And then this is a more vigorous system on Sunday, and that to bring some thunderstorms along with it. To your AccuWeather seven-day forecast, one thing we do have going for us, milder air, lots of 60s for the next few, but a rounds of afternoon showers on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The wind picks up chillier to start next week. We're back into the 50s from Monday and Tuesday, and snow will fall across northern New England. We'll talk about that, and we can expect the Sox doubleheader coming up next half hour. Paul? Did you just say snow? Yeah. It just doesn't stop. May right. snow. We might as well, right? We've come this far. We will still come back to you in just a little bit, Eric. Thank you. Well, tonight, Hollywood is mourning the loss of British actor Bob Hoskins, the character actor perhaps most famous for his role in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, died at the hospital from pneumonia. Two years ago, Hoskins had announced he had Parkinson's disease and was retiring from acting. He leaves behind a wife and four children. He was 71 years old. Well, marketers make money off of your personal information, so why shouldn't you? It's still that for us. We're going to show you how you can cash in. And fasten your seatbelt. Experts predict more turbulent skies for flyers. How it could make your ticket more expensive. And now, here's a look at what's ahead on the News at 6. New at 6 o'clock, a quirky but popular street performer attacked. He smashed me in the nose, just breaking my nose. How strangers who don't know him but see him every day are now rallying around the man they know only as Keytar Bear. I wanted to show him that Boston cares about him. You start your day with a cup of coffee, but if you had to stop, could you? It's definitely something that I fight with myself all the time. So is it just a habit that's hard to break, or is there something more behind the cravings? People have come to us saying, yes, please help me. Why psychologists are taking a new look at caffeine. Tonight on WBC News at 11. It doesn't make sense. How can any company offer 50 or 60% off? all the time. Something's not right. So I did some research, and you know what? National Forest Direct beat their 60% off price without a sale. At National Forest Direct, we offer next day installation of main brand carpeting, hardwood, and laminate flooring, and we'll beat anyone's price by 15% or it's free. Call 888-400-4 for a free estimate. I saved $400. Call 888-400-4. We guarantee to save you more. <laughs> American love rock musical that sparked a revolution and ignited a generation. At the Hanover Theater in Worcester, May 6th and 7th. Let the sun shine in. Get your tickets today. Visit thehanovertheater.org. Diamonds, the jewelry exchange, has half-carat solitaires for $4.99, one-carat $9.90, two-carat solitaires for $19.90, and one-carat studs are $5.99. We have most sizes and grades of GIA diamonds guaranteed the lowest price. Buy direct, the jewelry exchange in Sudbury. And now my journey the country for me to the lovely city of Boston. Cheers. And seeing as it's such a historic city, I'm sure they'll appreciate that Geico has been saving people money for over 75 years. Oh. Oh dear. I've 
drop my tea into the Boston Harbour. <laughs> I guess this part is over. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. <laughs> Take the Ford Focus Challenge, and you'll choose Focus with up to an EPA-estimated 40 miles per gallon highway. And now it feels so good to lease the New England Edition Focus for $99 a month for competitive owners. And the fun-to-drive Focus has more standard horsepower than Civic and Corolla. And just announced, you can buy Focus with up to $34.90 total savings during the Ford Focus Challenge. And start your day with Kate Merrill, David Wade, Todd Gunner, and Michelle Roberts. WBC News of the Morning, weekdays from 4.30 to 7. Turbulence can rattle even the most seasoned traveler out there, and scientists think that it'll only get worse in the coming years. Chief Meteorologist Eric Fisher explains what's happening in the skies above us and why this could increase the cost of a plane ticket. The friendly skies can get angry fast. When the wind speeds become strong in one place and weak in another, that difference between the strong and the, and the weak flow can become unstable. And what happens is the atmosphere reacts by breaking into turbulence and violent mixing is going on. That's the scientific definition of turbulence. Here's how passengers at Logan describe it. When you have the rough air on a flight like that, you kind of feel like, you know, your stomach's going to drop out from under you depending on how bad it is. I just close my eyes and pray so I don't actually see what's going on around me. <laughs> but we might have to get used to it. Some scientists believe increases in carbon dioxide are causing more volatility in the jet streams. Frank Colby is a professor of meteorology at UMass Lowell. You're going to get more difference in the wind speed, and you're going to have a greater incidence of turbulence, and stronger turbulence, more incidences of severe turbulence. The whole nose of the plane was down, and we were going down, and I honestly thought that was my last day on Earth. Stacy Iverson Hunt was on United Flight 1676, Denver to Billings, Montana, in February, when the plane hit severe turbulence started plummeting from 32,000 feet. One flight attendant was critically injured. They're bleeding pretty badly and they can't get it to stop. So they're requesting medical attention at the gate. And take a look inside this Cathay Pacific plane after it finally landed in Hong Kong. More serious injuries just a day after the United incident. Quite a few people in front of me were thrown up from the seat. We really worked and hard to try to keep the, the, uh, the airplane Steve Cunningham trains pilots at Nashville Flight Simulator and recreated a rocky flight for us. We're in severe turbulence, so the airplane is being bounced around. It's like being on a boat with uh, in the waves. Pilots are accustomed to handling bumps, but it still presents problems, particularly because this type of turbulence, known as clear air turbulence, can't be detected. But it's very abrupt and sudden. You could drop 100 or 200 feet. Uh, in a matter of a second. So there's a discomfort, the anxiety that comes along with a rough ride. But travelers could also feel a change in their wallet. The result is probably going to be more expensive flights because the planes are going to have to fly at, at less optimal elevations. If you fly lower, then you have more friction, and so your planes are less efficient, so you use more fuel. If you have to zigzag around the clear air turbulence, it's a longer flight, it's more fuel. You start looking at this, and it all adds up. Well, we've all become familiar with the fuel surcharge in recent years. Now, Professor Colby told us that scientists are becoming more focused on this problem. He believes forecasters will develop better ways to predict it. In the meantime, just make sure you buckle up. And interesting to note, CO2 in April around the globe was above 400 parts per million for the first time in human history. So there's no debating. There's more of it than any of us have ever seen. And it's a sickening feeling. Oh, absolutely. Kind of yeah, it's not just your normal bumps. These are clear air turbulence drops that plane pretty fast. Not a good feeling that anyone wants to go through. All right, Eric, thanks very much. Thank you. Well, still to come, the Cape Flyer getting ready to make its return. The new stop added to the schedule this year. Plus, after six months, the Rockingham County attorney here in New Hampshire is back at work and answering questions about the serious allegations against him. And this couple is fighting to stop doctors from using a device during a common medical procedure. Today, a big win for them, for the war is not yet over. Tomorrow on WBZ News, heavy rain could be hitting Boston during the morning rush. I'll be watching the roads to bring you any trouble spots with your commute. Plus, breaking news while you slept and the Daily Talk. Join us tomorrow starting at 4.30 a.m. 
report a claim, pay your bill. Safety's mobile app is just one more way we help you manage life's storms. For auto, home, and business, ask your independent agent about safety insurance. You'll notice the Goya difference even before you taste it. With the perfect blend of salt, pepper, and Latin spices, Goya adobo is a great new way to enhance your meat, poultry, and fish recipes. If it's Goya, it has to be good. Hi, I'm Roberto Napoleon. People always ask me, what is the beef lot difference? And when it comes to product, I always want the best. It lasts, it looks like the day it was laid down. This is an equal lot, this is a competitive rent. See the difference in the intensity of the color. And the color went all the way through. We apply a protective surface and eliminate all the pitfalls that other brands may have. That will not happen with a paper shoe product. They can be confident it's the best product they can possibly buy. See the Nico Lock difference. For more information, visit nicolock.com forward slash TV2. Tonight's primetime lineup is brought to you by Jeep. Hurry into your local dealer now for great deals on the entire iconic Jeep lineup, including the new Jeep Cherokee. Toyota is number one in value, but it gets better because we give you all new stylish Toyotas. Better yet, we give you great deals with the Toyota Gifts of Spring Savings Event. Receive the lowest ever lease on Camry, the most dependable mid-size car, for only $158 a month with no cost maintenance included. Or get best ever 0 for 60 plus 750 bonus cash on Camry. Hurry, on May 5th, Gifts of Spring will be wrapped up. Toyota, let's go places. spreader and save time. Just turn it on and go. It makes long care easy. What were you arrested for? I had a warrant that I didn't know anything about. It comes back and bites you. Next Judge Judy. Tomorrow at 4 on WBZ TV. Our top stories at 5.30. Rockland police searching for this man. Investigators say he kidnapped a nine-year-old boy outside his school, drove him around for about 30 minutes, then dropped him off in Abington. The boy wasn't harmed, but police are concerned the man may try something like this again. Plus, we have flood watches out for parts of the area, especially here across Connecticut, Rhode Island, and southern Massachusetts. A lot of rain. It's the same storm system that has caused a whole host of issues. This heavy rain moving in tonight. We've got the timeline and when it goes out, plus when it warms up. And a device used in a common procedure to deal with fibroids will no longer be sold by Johnson & Johnson. In fact, the device is used to break up fibroid tumors in women, offering a less invasive process for a quicker recovery. But there are growing concerns that the procedure may actually spread cancer. Our Dr. Malika Marshall first reported on these concerns last week, and now the largest manufacturer of the device is taking some action. That's right, this is some good news. A division of Johnson & Johnson, the largest manufacturer of morselators, has suspended the sale and distribution of these devices. That's a step forward for a Needham couple who's been leading the charge against this procedure. But, they say, there is still more to be done to keep women safe. Amy Reed is talking to a stranger about cancer, a woman from the North Shore who just learned her diagnosis. My wife, Barbara, recently passed away from developing lateral her bone cancer. Amy and her husband, Human Nortash, are hearing from a lot of people since they started petitioning the government on change.org to ban morselation a laparoscopic approach for a hysterectomy or removal of uterine fibroids that's now blamed for taking isolated cancer cells and spreading them throughout a woman's abdomen. That's what happened to that woman on the North Shore. It's what happened to Amy. I'm still undergoing chemotherapy. I had, um, I got one session on Monday. Some hospitals, like the Brigham, where Amy had her surgery, are following an FDA recommendation and have banned morselation. Now, the largest manufacturer of morselators is suspending the sale and distribution of the device. Both Reed and Norchash are doctors and are encouraged by this step, but say more needs to be done. They just stopped selling them and distributing them. They're not pulling the devices off the, off the, off the shelves, which, you know, I think is, is, continues to be irresponsible, frankly. Um, these devices are capable of hurting women at a rate of 1 in 350 undergoing this operation. So can you derive any sort of satisfaction from this? We're happy that it's being 
it looks like it will be corrected as, as a medical error, um, but it should have never happened in the first place. So it's, it's hard to be happy that it's being fixed. It was more so tragic that it wasn't. In the end, we can look right back at it and, and say, you know what, we, we were able to find meaning in this uh, craziness. Now, Ethicon, the division of Johnson & Johnson, said it will wait for further guidelines from both the FDA and the overall medical community before resuming sales. Doctors Reed and Nurchash worry that other manufacturers won't follow suit and that smaller hospitals might not be aware of the FDA warning and will continue to use devices they have in stock. And I think that's one of the concerns that they had with the woman that they were talking on the phone in the piece that she, that's exactly what happened to her. It's amazing though that they're doctors and so that they know how to sort of approach this whole fight. That's right, so they're in a position where they can actually lead the charge and they're obviously doing an amazing job of it. Um, it's sad to think that someone who may not have been in that position might not have been able to get as much done as they have. Also scary to think that they got the word out and the word's being heated yet it's gonna take a while to spread to other doctors around the country. That's right, so they're hoping that they'll speed up the process a little bit. All right, Doctor, Stop doing it. Dr. Marshall, thank you. Thank you can send your story ideas as always to Dr. Malika. You can email her at drmalika at cbs.com or you can tweet her at Malika Marshall. Well, it's official. Former Lawrence Mayor William Lantigua is running for state representative. The elections office determined that he gathered enough signatures to get back on the ballot. Last year, Lantigua lost his mayoral re-election bid amid corruption accusations. Lantigua is running as an independent for the same House seat which he held before becoming mayor. Well, a prominent elected official in New Hampshire is back on the job despite some serious accusations of sexual harassment and mishandling money. Rockingham County Attorney Jim Reams returned to work today even though the state attorney general wants to permanently remove him from office. Reams spoke with New Hampshire Bureau Chief Michael Rosenfield. After nearly six months off the job, Rockingham County Attorney Jim Reams has been allowed to go back to work while he awaits his own trial. If I was concerned about it, I wouldn't be sitting here today. And they've been demanding my resignation since November, and I've told them no. The New Hampshire Attorney General's office is trying to remove Reams from his elected position, accusing him of everything from financial mismanagement to discrimination against pregnant employees. Nobody ever um, uh, was discriminated against because they were pregnant. We've had dozens and dozens of children born in this office since I've been county attorney. This scathing report from the attorney general's office says some workers called him creepy Uncle Jim for inappropriate behavior and sexual harassment. What about the allegations of inappropriate sexual stuff? Never happened. Absolutely never happened. That's the stuff that if I did it, I would not put my family through this. Um, but I didn't do it and they can't prove that I did it. Reams, who was greeted with this sign when he came back to work today, along with some 5,500 emails while he'd been suspended, says most of the people who complained no longer work in the office. And for the ones that remain, they're focusing on the caseload at hand. He has not been charged with any crime. But there must be something there. There's nothing there. Not at all. That's why I'm not afraid to go to trial. The Attorney General's office goes to court in August to remove Reams from office. Whatever the judge will decide, Reams has said he won't be seeking re-election. His term ends in January. In Brentwood, New Hampshire, Michael Rosenfield, WBZ News. Well, the Cape Flyer is set to make its return for a second year. The train connecting Boston and Cape Cod runs only on the weekends. Service begins Friday, May 23rd. It will run through Labor Day. This year, there will be an extra stop at Wareham Village. It is the first season the Cape Flyer carried more than 16,000 riders, so it was a big success. Coming up for us, a rock worth millions. Why this diamond could break records on the auction block. And rabies concerns in a local community after a raccoon goes on the attack. Tonight we're hearing from one of the victims. Let's do it. Oh, which of you has the more powerful engine? Okay. I also want heated and cool front seats. It has to be standard. Do you have that? It's clear, right? Definitely. When you're looking for a luxury SUV, make sure you ask the right questions. Visit your Lincoln showroom today and lease the powerful 2014 Lincoln MKX for $369 a month. At Cambridge Paving.
Paving Stones, we believe you can transform any backyard into an extraordinary destination. From the pool party, to the dinner party, to the after party. Only Cambridge Paving Stones have Armor Tech. A unique process that guarantees the color will never fade. Backed by our fully transferable lifetime warranty. Visit CambridgePavers.com. Cambridge Paving Stones with Armor Tech. It's a real estate jungle out there. That's why we've let a lion loose in your neighborhood. But there's no need to run. This lion is on your side every step of the way. Lear Realty Partners. We're one of the largest real estate firms in New England. With over 300 experienced agents, a 15-year track record, and the latest tools roaring into the market with a brand new name, Lair Realty Partners. The roar that opens more doors. Want to relax all summer long? Buy a Namco patio set. This week, get huge savings on all patio furniture. You'll love our new Brookside collection. This high-top dining set, originally priced at $23.66, is just $15.99. Or this insane deal on the Bally Bistro set, only $149. Come in now for reduced minimum financing. Order online now and pick up in store. Namco, America's largest pool, patio, and game room superstore. Toyota is number one in value, but it gets better. Because we give you all new stylish Toyotas. Better yet, we give you great deals with the Toyota Gifts of Spring Savings Event. Receive our lowest $178 a month lease on an all-wheel drive RAV4 with no cost maintenance included. Or get 0 for 60 plus $500 bonus cash on Sienna, including all-wheel drive models. Hurry, on May 5th, Gifts of Spring will be wrapped up. Toyota, let's go places. The most important thing about the Vernon Cancer Center is that we have high expertise in the medical oncology field who provide compassion, care, understanding for patients and their families as they go through this journey of cancer. We strive to have a multidisciplinary approach to cancer care, including supportive services. I think a good doctor shows compassion, caring, the ear to listen, and helping the patient through their journey. Health Watch is brought to you by Newton Wellesley Hospital. Tonight, the medical examiner's office is working to identify a body that came ashore on Revere Beach. Revere police and state troopers came out to the scene near 420 Revere Beach Boulevard this morning. Investigators say the remains appear to be those of an adult, but right now they can't determine the age or gender. Making domestic violence a crime in New Hampshire, Joshua's Law is on the way to the desk of Governor Maggie Hassams after the House overwhelmingly passed this legislation. It is named after nine-year-old Joshua Savon. Last year, during a supervised visit at the YWCA in Manchester, Joshua's father shot and killed him. Right now, defendants in domestic violence cases are charged with other crimes like assault. Governor Hassam says that she looks forward to signing the bill into law. Some Arlington residents will have to go through the painful process of getting rabies shots after an encounter with a rabid raccoon. On Friday, the raccoon hopped a fence and then attacked a two-year-old girl in her own backyard. When her grandfather tried to get the animal off the little girl, the raccoon bit him as well. Police think the same animal bit another little boy down the street. The police came and had said there was another bite on the street earlier, so... They kind of put two and two together. I kept them kicking him, and he kept them, you know, uh, showing me his teeth and biting and wanting to jump on, on me, but I just kept them kicking him. Experts say a few key things to remember here. Don't feed wildlife, keep trash cans secure, and make sure that all pets are up to date on shots in case they get too close to a raccoon. Banning Donald Sterling for life may have been the easy part. Coming up next, inside the brewing legal battle with the NBA. Can they really force the billionaire to sell the L.A. Clippers? We've got a soaking rainstorm on the way in. We're going to be picking up tonight. We've got the timeline for that, plus a much-needed warmth in the forecast. To the champions, the underdogs, the everyday heroes, to the runners, the rowers, those who ride to save lives, to the innovators, the educators, the role models, and our kids. 
At WBZ-TV, we celebrate you because commitment to community isn't just reporting what's happening. It's supporting those who make our community great. We are WBZ Channel 4, the news team you know you can trust. It's Bernie and Phil's triple play. And you get it free right away. Your choice. Free tax, free delivery, free interest until 2017. With no minimum, no down payment, and no waiting. That's nice. Register today for AARP's Life at 50 Plus event, May 8th through the 10th at the BCEC. Featuring great speakers including HGTV's Kitchen Cousins, nightly entertainment, and exciting exhibits. Visit aarp.org slash events or call. Don't miss the Bach Honda Spring into a Honda sales event at one of our two great locations. Bach Honda on the Auto Mile, Route 1 in Norwood, or Bach Honda West on Littleton Road in Westford, Mass. Drive home a brand new Honda Accord for just $79 per month. That's right, lease a brand new Honda Accord for just $79 per month. Two great Bach Honda locations, one legendary low Bach Honda price. when you can have a Sealy for less. The Sealy Posturepedic Classic at Bernie and Phil's. Classic Posturepedic quality, starting at just $3.99 for a queen set. Come see why Bernie and Phil's is the number one Sealy dealer in New England. Real people steal people. They just won't compromise. Steel trimmers start at just $129.95. Visit steeldealers.com. day on Wall Street, the Dow closing at an all-time high. Today's gains helped bring the Dow into the black for the first time in 2014. The last record high came on New Year's Eve. Well, tonight there is word that Oprah Winfrey, along with David Geffen and Larry Ellison, may make a bid to buy the L.A. Clippers. The team returned to the court in L.A. last night with players and fans united in support of the NBA's lifetime ban of the owner, Donald Sterling. Well, some of the sponsors who pulled their ads in protest of Sterling's racial comments have already reinstated them. John Keller says the battle with Sterling is far from over. I am banning Mr. Sterling for life. For NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, that was the easy part. The heavier lift will be forcing Sterling to sell the Clippers. That creates a litigation nightmare for all parties here. WBZ legal analyst Harry Mannion notes the NBA's constitution contains no language authorizing such a move. There is a clause covering misconduct by an owner that is detrimental to the best interests of basketball. But that only calls for a fine, not a forced sale. He's entitled to see whether other owners uh, have engaged in similar conduct. I'm going to ask for every one of your texts, your emails, every letter you've written, any possible document that's been memorialized in which you discuss in any way, shape, or form race. That could be dicey for a league that imposed a player dress code nine years ago out of concern over a so-called thug image. Mannion says NBA lawyers are likely reaching out to Sterling Circle to see if he'll take the easy way out or the hard way. He got caught, and uh, now the question is what are the consequences to everyone within the orbit? of this uh, cyclone that this guy has created. Money helped buy Sterling immunity from past evidence of his bigotry, and it can buy top shelf lawyers to fight his ejection now. Could we look at the Sterling saga and say money talks and just about everything else walks? 
Well, that's of course true. Clipper fans were waving signs at last night's game that proclaimed, We are one, the slogan created by team management in response to the uproar. Well, let's face it, when it comes to the legal system, the fact is, we aren't one. There are people with deep pockets, like billionaire Donald Sterling, and then there are the rest of us. And Jonathan and Paula Harry Mannion uh, predicts, just an educated guess, that this won't be resolved quickly, that it might not even be resolved by the start of next season, and that'll be just a whole nother mess. It'll get really ugly. Yeah, so exactly. if they force him to sell the team, then he could turn around and say, I want discovery for all the other owners to see what kind of conduct you've been engaged in that I'm being accused of. Exactly, and not every NBA franchise has classy owners like Wood Grossbeck. You've got to wonder who else may have said impolitic or racially charged things over the years. When you're going back 10 years into someone's emails and texts, boy, you could dig up a whole lot of stuff. All right, John, thanks very much for that. Thank you. Turn our attention now to the weather because it seems to be what everybody is talking about. At least when you leave the house, you keep thinking, look, we're going into May. Mm -hmm. you got short sleeves on. You should be fine. Not so much. No, it's chilly and Eric, a lot of rain on the way tonight. Right now we're going to get a pretty good soaking out of the storm system. All told, we're getting away pretty easily from this one. Just an unbelievable storm that we've been tracking this week. This is a 48-hour loop, so over two days and almost nothing moving. Three feet of snow in South Dakota. We had the tornado outbreak across the south last night unbelievable flooding in Florida, and now the rain is moving into our neck of the woods. You look at what happened across the Panhandle, look at that flare-up, a very local zone of unbelievable rain around Pensacola and Mobile. Radar estimates at 10 to 20 inches in Pensacola, they had over 15, the wettest day they've ever recorded. You're talking about places that get hit by hurricanes routinely, and last night, the wettest day uh, they've ever seen. That's some real stuff. For us, a flood watch is out. For Plymouth and Bristol counties, as well as southern Worcester County, we have rain on the way. It will be nothing like what they saw there in Florida. But they are dealing with significant flooding from New York down across Jersey and into Baltimore and D.C. this evening. And that will factor in across parts of southern New England. For Boston, it's a few sprinkles right now. The rain should stay light in far eastern parts of the state through the evening. And then eventually we'll work in a steadier rain, a steady light rain, to at times moderate falling across parts of Worcester County. So we're looking at the rainfall that will fill in as we head through the overnight, becoming steadier. Tomorrow morning, it's going to be a very wet drive. There could be a little bit of thunder mixed in, certainly some downpours as well. And even at lunchtime, showers should be lingering, particularly from Boston down to the South Shore and the Cape. Tomorrow afternoon, this front really hasn't come through, so there'll still be pop-up showers and thunderstorms, and that'll be the case through the evening until the sun goes down. So for the storm system, the steadiest and the heaviest, late tonight into tomorrow morning, looks like a widespread three-quarters of an inch to about an inch and a half. There should be some poor drainage flooding to go along with that. And there will also be windswept, especially at the south coast, where the winds will be gustiest, around 30, 35 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning, rain gear, necessary commute, certainly slower than average. 40s to around 50, nearing 60 at midday, so we will see a milder day. And into the low 60s as we head toward the afternoon, still looking at those scattered showers in an isolated thunderstorm, though. Warmest temps will be away from the coast into the 60s. South coast and islands, we're looking at the 50s for tomorrow with that wind coming off the water. Uh, once we get this out of the way, a very fast-moving pattern. So one impulse moves through on Friday, that brings a round of afternoon showers. Another one behind it, it brings Saturday afternoon showers. And another front behind it, and that brings Sunday afternoon showers and thunderstorms. So each day brings with it a chance for some rainfall. Here's your AccuWeather seven-day forecast. We will mix in some sunshine for each of those days. The brightest times will be the mornings, the cloudiest will be the afternoons. High temperatures in the 60s, so more seasonable. We'll cool down next week, though, Monday and Tuesday in the 50s and mountain snow in northern New England Sunday night into Monday as ski season goes on uh, forever. Here's your schoolyard shout out for today. Todd visited the Norback Avenue School in Worcester. Bunch of first graders there, They're dressed in spring colors there. I see a lot of pink in the crowd. They're hoping for some warmer weather and finally it will match the outfits coming up. <laughs> we wore the right size, orange and purple. We're, we're hoping for the warmer weather. It's been just, it seems brutal. April was average, but it just seems worse. Doesn't seem brutal. It is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> All right, the world's most famous redhead now is single once again. People Magazine reports a 29-year-old Prince Harry and his on-again, off-again Cressida Bonus. They're off again. A source close to the prince told the magazine that Bonus was too needy and it wasn't working out. Really? They leaked that kind of information out? Yep. Another source claims that the breakup was amicable and that the two will remain friends. So I guess she won't be getting one of these from him. A gem that's more than a cut above the rest. A dazzling, dazzling jewel called the blue.
believed to be the largest, wow. flawless, vivid blue diamond in the world. This 13.22 carat stunner is expected to bring a record price when it hits the auction block next month. Experts predict the diamond could sell for as much as $25 million. That is beautiful. That's quite the stone. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, there's no doubt about it. There's already a lot of personal information out there about us online. So how would you like to make some money from selling yours? Straight ahead, we'll show you how you can do it. And now here at Jack and Lisa, they've got a look at what's coming up at 6. Paul and Jonathan, thank you very much. Coming up on our news in a moment, the very latest on breaking news. We'll have more on the floor of Boston City Hall suddenly buckling. And new at 6 o'clock, honoring classroom heroes how students and staff work together to save a teacher who was in cardiac arrest. And coming up about 6.17 tonight, Wednesday's Child. Max is a shy teenager, but a budding artist who's already found success. You'll meet him at 6. I was impressed with how many great reviews they had. What makes Serve Pro different is that our people really care about making our customers happy. They asked what they could do to make painting an extraordinary experience for us. And they kept the gate locked. We work from a personalized written certainty pledge. Serve Pro painters did a wonderful job. They respected our lifestyle and their home. It's about five-star craftsmanship and having truly satisfied customers. Schedule your free estimate at CertiPro.com. Serve Pro painters. Because painting is personal. I see the uncertainty in people's eyes, but that only fuels me more. For me, it's more than a job, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to give you a healthy mouth. You know, we've got a lot in common. Thanks, Danica. Ready. Caspi Dental wants you to bring your mouth in for a pit stop with free exams and x-rays for patients without insurance. Call 1-800-ASPEN-DENTAL because your mouth is our mission. Are you depressed or feeling blue? Have you lost interest in your usual activities? Have you noticed a change in your sleeping and eating habits? Doctors at the Depression Clinical and Research Program at Massachusetts General Hospital are working to develop new antidepressant treatments and studying the treatments that are currently available. Eligible participants will receive psychiatric evaluation, study treatment, and regular visits with study clinicians at no cost. For more information, call 1-855-75-BLUES or online at massgeneral.org slash depression. Experience winning like never before at Twin River Casino. Survey says the Family Feud Live Stage Show will be at Twin River May 23rd and 24th. Win tickets Monday through Friday. The more you play slots, the better chance you have to win. It's all at the place with more excitement, the hottest action, and always New England's friendliest casino. Twin River Casino. So much more, so close. It's a reality in today's computer-driven society. Your private information isn't all that private anymore. Yeah, marketers find the data extremely valuable about all of us. Kate Merrill asks this question. Why shouldn't you be the one to make some money off of your own personal information? The only person who really has the full 360 view of who you are is you. So why shouldn't you be in control of your own information? Matt Hogan has created the website DataCoup. It allows users to decide what personal information they want to put online for marketers to see and to get paid for it. Businesses would love to know as much as possible. The more they can know about people, the better. The site allows you to connect your financial and social media information all in one place. You can connect a credit or debit card and um, you know, four or five social media accounts in probably less than 30 seconds. Eric Fleming posted his data on the site. If I'm going to be sharing all of this data anyway, why not get something, you know, directly in return? And if that means that I can buy someone a drink at the end of the week, great. This is the first site to offer consumers cash, but some worry about privacy issues. Do they know where I live? Do they know that my kids had a cold last week? Or do they simply know my shoe size? and that I'd love to travel to Miami. Fleming isn't making a lot of money yet, but he says at least he's profiting and not the marketers. I'm up to 40 bucks now. <laughs> Some debunk the privacy concerns, saying that we already give up a lot of information with reward cards, except now you can pick up a little cash along the way. Kate Merrill, WBZ News. It'll be tempting for some people. For some. Well, stay with us. We have much more news still ahead. That is good to, of course, at 5 o'clock, but the news at 6 starts right now.
Breaking news, a portion of Boston City Hall buckles. A boy kidnapped, then released on the South Shore. How he's now helping police find the man and why officers are so worried. Flood watches are in effect as heavy rain moves into the region. We've got the timing, how much will fall, and how much flooding will be a concern across the area. A street performer with a unique style and quirky appearance. I see Keith Harbert and I'm like, my day has been made. The random attack that left him with a broken nose and how the city is routed around it. Live from our studios in Boston, WBZ News at 6 starts right now. And some breaking news tonight. A little mess in Boston City Hall. Tiles actually buckling up from the floor. But the area was already closed to the public. I'm Jack Whitting. I'm Lisa Hughes. Workers are now fixing this problem on the second floor of City Hall, and that's where our Bobby Sisk joins us live. Bobby? Yeah, Lisa, a great way to describe this. Lisa and Jack is a big mess here. This happened just after 4 uh, this afternoon. You can see the area behind me. Uh, what appears to have happened is start with one tile that began to buckle, and then it kept going for about 50 feet to the stairwell. Let's take a look at some of the video we shot when we arrived here. This is an area on the second floor outside the registry division. That office was closed today when this happened. There were no injuries. We talked to the Commissioner of Property and Construction Management for the city. He says this does not signal some structural problem with the building. It is, in his opinion, solid. They did bring in an engineer who signed off on the building. Instead, this is wear and tear from decades of use and lack of expansion joints, which would have been required, would not have been, excuse me, when this building was built. Listen. It's happened before. We kind of expected uh, this is a, a big traffic area, people coming and going. So any loose brick, I mean, think of your own bathroom or kitchen or wherever you have the tile. You, they, they loosen up and then all of a sudden they all start to go at the same time. That's what happened here. This has happened three times before in this building, again, believed to be cosmetic. Crews will take up and salvage the tiles. That's what they're doing right now. They'll put out some plywood so the workers can be in this area tomorrow as they come to work here at City Hall. We did ask, and this is not believed to be related to any of this destruction in the area, including the revamp of the government center T, which is nearby. I'm live in City Hall tonight. Bobby says, WBZ News. Jack, back to you. Thank you, Bobby. Now at 6 o'clock, going door to door, warning neighbors about a kidnapping. Tonight, police search for the man who abducted a little boy in Rockland. Well, he let the boy go, but police are worried the next child won't be so lucky. Christina Hager joins us live in Rockland with late details. Christina. Well, Jack, Rockland police here just released a map of the route this boy says he took during his 25-minute abduction, and here it is, the streets police took again with this boy today. He was in the car with them, directing them to where he went, mostly on Route 123 to Route 58. They used this to go out and collect video. Police are now checking with businesses for any surveillance video of the child abductor they're looking for. The man whose picture they took door to door in Abington and Rockland. It's unnerving and um and terrible things like that still go on. Officers spent hours working on this with the nine-year-old boy who also helped them map the exact route, he says, he took with the man after he mistakenly got in his car at after-school pickup Tuesday. Rockland School Superintendent John Retchless. We do have school employees supervising the pickup area in the afternoon. The boy said he thought it was his dad's friend, that they drove to neighboring Abington, where he remembers being on Lake Street when he asked why they were here. This wasn't the way to his father's home in Hull. That's when he says the man told him to get out. He walked over this bridge to the Abington Police Department and asked for help. My f biggest fear is, and the fear of our detective unit, is that this was sort of a trial run for somebody that may have wanted to kidnap or to uh, molest a child. That's why the added security at school today, a review of safety lessons and parents talking to children. It's, it's just scary because you don't know what's going to happen. It, it could happen to anyone. And a few more details on the suspect description. Police say he had gray hair. This according to the boy's description. Gray, short hair in the front, and what police called a tail longer in the back. He had on a black hoodie with white letters USN across the front. And the car, a white four-door sedan. Police are now going through surveillance video from about a dozen businesses along that route 
looking for a picture of that car. In Rockland, Christina Hager, WBZ News. Lisa, back to you. Pretty detailed description. Christina, thank you. Well, the weather now and the storm system that has caused so many problems across the country is now headed here. That means we'll see a lot of rain tonight and probably a lot for the morning commute as well. Fortunately, nothing like what's happening in Florida. Heavy rain there is washing out roads. The storm's also to blame for a major problem in Baltimore tonight. A retaining wall collapsed, taking 10 cars with it. Our chief meteorologist, Eric Fisher, joins us now. And Eric, this is a tough system. It is just broken loose all across the country from this storm system and dealing with big issues tonight from New York down through D.C. and Baltimore. You see this area of heavy rainfall now the forcing of the atmosphere that's squeezing out all of this water. It's going to stay most potent right here in this corridor, reaching up into Connecticut tonight. So while the rain is starting to move in, the heaviest from this storm should stay just off to our west. Now, Central Mass, particularly Worcester County, this is where you will see steady rain this evening. But Boston area, it's very light. It should stay that way this evening, and the least amount of all, North Shore toward the New Hampshire seacoast. Weather Service has put up flood watches for Plymouth and Bristol counties. Also, southern Worcester County, the rain will be picking up as we head through the overnight. Generally from west to east, temperatures in the lower 40s. And we'll be tracking some very heavy rain for tomorrow morning's drive. That's where we could be looking at up to an inch of rainfall in some spots a little bit more before this wraps up. A full timeline on it coming up in just a little bit. Jack, Lisa, back to you. All right, we'll see you then, Eric. Olga Roche is out at the helm of the Department of Children and Families, but she's still working there. The commissioner stepped down yesterday after the deaths of three children who were under DCF supervision. Five-year-old Jeremiah Oliver's body was found nearly two weeks ago. He had been missing for months. And two young babies also died recently. Governor Patrick says Roche is helping with reforms that were already underway. She's got 30-plus uh, years of, uh, of depth in the field and incredible background and a lot of wisdom. And she's in the middle of uh, working, helping us work through some of the reforms we've been, we've been doing. Um, so it's a little abrupt and unhelpful to DCF to simply cut that cord. Now, Erin Devaney has already taken over. She's serving as commissioner on an interim basis. A developing story tonight, a Boston College history project has led to the arrest of a Peace Prize winner in a 40-year-old murder case. Jerry Adams, the former leader of the IRA and the head of the Sinn Féin political party, is being charged in the 1972 murder of a woman who was abducted and executed by the IRA. The IRA thought she was a spy. Two IRA veterans implicated Adams in interviews they gave to researchers for a Boston College history project. Well, the tapes were supposed to stay secret, but Irish police fought and finally got copies. Well, this must have been very terrifying. A math teacher collapsed right in front of her class. But she is alive today, thanks to her students and her co-workers. And as Ken McLeod shows us, they were honored today for their calm and their bravery. Yes, 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 thank you so much. Hugs for a school nurse this afternoon from the family of a grateful math teacher. I mean, everything just fell into place to save her. She's talking about her sister, 61-year-old Joan Eastman, who very nearly died on the job here at the O'Brien School of Math and Science. It was late on the morning of March 31st when teacher Joan Eastman suffered a heart attack and collapsed in front of her math class. Some of her students ran to her side while others scrambled for help. I did what I thought I should have done, which I guess was the right thing. Nakeo Murray and a couple of classmates rolled her over and cleared her airway. School nurse Carrie Bell Peace was among the first staffers to arrive, told only a teacher had fallen. So when I get to the scene and I see what I see, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is more than that. While she and an assistant principal did CPR, another staffer ran to fetch the school's portable defibrillator and Eastman got four jolts. If there was no AED here, my sister would be dead. I know that for a fact. Paramedics who took over say fast action by staffers and students saved the teacher's life. I think there's a lot of people that would freeze in that situation, and, and understandably, um, but they didn't. They, they didn't. Now, her students, co-workers, and family would just love to bring the story full circle. Now that it's worked out, like I'm glad that she's fine, and I hope everyone in the class gives her a big welcome back. Eastman is out of the hospital and recovering at home, but there is no timetable yet for her return to the classroom. In Roxbury, Ken McLeod, WBZ News. Coming up on WBZ News tonight, back in the political saddle, the first lawmaker expelled from the state legislature in nearly 100 years may be planning a comeback.
Also ahead, a cult hero to subway riders attacked. How strangers are now rallying to help the man they only know as Kitar Bear. Then coming up on Wednesday's Child tonight, we'll have a chance to meet a talented young artist who's already sold one of his creations, and boy, he's proud about that. Now, he's hoping for more success and most importantly, to find a family. Boston's must-see dance event of the season is Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Don't miss the world's most popular dance company at the City Way Theater. May 1st through 4th only. For tickets, visit citycenter.org. Spring has finally arrived, and a Subaru with symmetrical all-wheel drive can help you enjoy it. Love the road you're on, and a brand new Subaru Outback. Awarded Top Safety Pick Plus by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Drive home a brand new Subaru Outback, well-equipped for only $23,795. What makes a Subaru, Subaru? Plus, get 0% financing for up to 36 months. Get a great deal, and go love spring. There's a new light shining on the future of health care. On forward-thinking care that's close to home. Welcome to Leahy Health. To nationally recognized doctors, award-winning hospitals, and clinical excellence in primary care. In all corners of medicine. Just around the corner. Health care. For whom matters most? You. Leahy Health. Looks can be deceiving. It's certainly true with furniture. Two items may appear to be the same, but are they? At Boston Interiors, all of the upholstered furniture is made in America. Each piece is crafted with high-grade American hardwood, reinforced block corners, and eco-friendly materials. So when you shop at Boston Interiors, you buy furniture that's great looking and long lasting. Visit Boston Interiors today and save during our spring home sale. The smarter you are about furniture, the more you love Boston Interiors. spreader and save time. Just turn it on and go. It makes long hair easy. Conviction, creativity, courage. This is the Mazda way. It's why the IIHS named both the Mazda 3 and Mazda 6 a top safety pick plus. And both are named a car and driver 10 best. What do you drive? Now, lease the 2014 Mazda 3 ISV for $159 a month for 36 months. Boston's must-see dance event of the season is Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Don't miss the world's most popular dance company at the City Way Theater. May 1st through 4th only. For tickets, visit citycenter.org. State Representative Carlos Enriquez is out of jail tonight. Enriquez served time for assaulting a girlfriend and was granted parole. Enriquez was expelled from the House back in February. He's the first lawmaker expelled in almost a century. And now he's reportedly considering running in the special election to fill his old seat. So at 6 o'clock tonight, FETA riders are rallying to the aid of a very unique subway performer known as Kitar Bear. He's a frequent performer at Downtown Crossing, Panel Hall, and Harvard Square, but he's been silenced for now. He's been attacked twice by a stranger. Beth Germano with the story. Beneath the furry exterior is the soul of a rock musician who's gained celebrity status on the streets of Boston, calling himself Kitar Bear and still remaining anonymous by phone. Well, I'm trying to make a statement that you don't know who I am. You just enjoy the music. The street musician developed his identity as an avid Bruins fan. But when Kitar Bear played his strapped-on keyboard here at Faneuil Hall last Friday, someone took advantage and sucker punched him hard enough to break his nose. And I'm thinking it could have been a knockout game, but the way he ran off and then he taunted me then. I was like, nah, it was a this one no knockout. It's put him in hibernation for a while, but on social media, he's gained cult status, 
with fans like Abby Taylor raising money to help the injured bear, already over the $3,000 mark in a mere 24 hours. Just because one guy did something stupid, um, it doesn't doesn't mean he should stop performing, and it doesn't mean that Boston's not a safe place for him. He believes it's also the same person who attacked him here about a month ago, throwing a Snapple bottle that damaged some of the keys to his instrument, and he could hardly run and chase. We're here to play music. Our intentions are not to fight with anybody in the public. I got a great imagination. Street performer Rob Thomas says it's not an easy profession. It's a risk every time because you're in the streets. There's no protection except for the, the grace that you have with God. It's given this bear the jitters and hopes he doesn't have to wait until spring is over to play again. In Boston, Beth Germano, WBZ News. In addition to the online contributions, Keysar Bear supporters are holding a fundraiser next Thursday, week from tomorrow, at Work Bar in Cambridge. Now let's talk about the weather. Nah. Do we have to? <laughs> oh, Eric, it is so lousy. <laughs> At least the last night I said today's a good day to sleep all day and just to, to wait till the next one. What do you think? Were we right on that? Yep. Yeah. All right. Yep. I think a lot could ride sharing that sentiment. Today we've been between 41 and 45 degrees in Boston for 42 straight hours now. It's the average high for early March. That about sums it up. Here's why. Do we need to change the wind to change our fortunes? Winds out of the east for today. As we head into tomorrow, we see a shift out of the south. So it's still chilly right near the south coast, but we'll start to bring in the milder air. And as we head toward Friday, the wind shifts to the west, which is always a warmer direction for us. We'll also hold the sea breezes at bay, so everyone will get in on some milder air. We're going to get there. We've got some rain to get through first. Now, the heaviest rainfall in New York City, down toward D.C. This is going to be a big issue tonight, folks. I guarantee you a lot more flooding pictures are going to come out in that corridor up and down 995. It's starting to press its way in here, but we've got a lot of dry air at the surface. So you look towards Central Mass, across Worcester County, Lemonster, Athol, you've got a steadier rain coming down. You head toward Boston, North Shore, Cape and the Islands, very light, just a few drops here. That should stay the case as we head through this evening. Not expecting the heavy stuff to move in until later on, once we can finally saturate the whole column of air above us. So flood watches are out, Plymouth and Bristol counties, as well as southern Worcester County. I do think the biggest totals overall are back in the Connecticut, the Berkshires, and the New York City area. And the timing for this rain, we'll see it pick up overnight, becoming a little more steady. By far, the highest totals for all the folks who are watching us tonight will be for you in Worcester County out of this one. So we head toward tomorrow morning, rain steady. There'll be some downpours. Could be a little bit of thunder mixed in here. And even for lunchtime, still some scattered showers, and through the afternoon and the evening, I don't think we're going to be completely dry. There'll be more showers around, some rumbles of thunder mixed in. It's not until the sun goes down tomorrow night that we're finally in the clear. So for this rainfall, the steadiest and heaviest late tonight into tomorrow morning, about three quarters to an inch and a half of total rain. Could be some poor drainage flooding because of that. And windswept near the south coast in particular, some gusts up to 30 or 35 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning, rain gear necessary. Do expect a slower than average commute. For midday, still rain likely, especially the far eastern parts of the state. And then as we head through the afternoon and evening, you'll get these scattered showers, a few rumbles of thunder. But most towns get above 60 degrees, so finally feeling a little bit warmer outside. Particularly away from the water, down toward the south coast, Cape and Islands, staying stuck in the 50s, but at least it's not the 40s. And then we look forward to the rest of the week. And the jet stream is going to go a little bit more flat, what we call zonal, which means a bunch of systems are going to move through in quick time. So Friday afternoon, round of showers. We go to Saturday afternoon, another system, another round of showers. We go into Sunday afternoon, there'll be more thunderstorms popping up, and that will usher in some cooler and drier air. So here's your AccuWeather seven-day forecast. At least we've got the 60s there, more seasonable temperatures. Most of the days, Friday through Sunday, it's brightest in the morning. The clouds build, and we get the round of showers in the afternoon. Now, what on Sunday brings a punch? Highs in the 50s for Monday and Tuesday, and there could be some snow in northern New England, where they have... At least three dozen trails still open at Jay Peak in northern Vermont. Ooh. If you want to still ski, you can do that. <laughs> Jack, Lisa, back to you. Skiers are happy. All right, Eric, thanks. Now, the Red Sox are rained out tonight, but we're going to start with the Bruins. Yeah, and we're going to welcome back Steve. He's been on a yeah. little hijinks somewhere. A little, little vacation. Good to be back, though. Especially around all, with all the action. Three game sevens in the NHL tonight. As for the Bruins, they play tomorrow night against the Montreal Canadiens in game one of their series at the Garden. The NHL seemed to drag their feet announcing when this series would start. Claude Julien didn't expect it to be tomorrow. We had to make some adjustments, obviously. You know, at first it looked more like a Friday, maybe Saturday, and, you know, there was a lot of that talk, but there was never any talk of Thursday. So you plan accordingly, and then you find out that, you know, last night that you got to kind of move a little quicker than expected. 
the Bruins practice again at the Garden today. Even if they weren't planning on playing tomorrow, they'll have no problem getting revved up to face Montreal because the two teams can't stand each other. And Milan Lucic won't deny it. He hates them. Yeah, I, I mean, I do. If you ask them the same question, I'm sure they give you the same answer about if they hate us. And, you know, it's just natural for, for me, you know, being here for seven years now and, and just being a part of, uh, you know, this organization, you know, you just naturally learn to, to hate the, the Montreal Canadiens and the battles that we've had with them over the last couple of years, you know, has definitely made you hate them. And I think, you know, this being the first time meeting him outside the first round, I think it's definitely going to go up uh, another level. And coming in at number one on Montreal's most hated list, defenseman P.K. Subban, one of the most despised players in all of hockey, a master instigator who does a great job baiting opponents into taking bad penalties. Brad Marchand says the Bruins, well, they have to stay disciplined. We just got to play, uh, play our game and, um, you know, whenever we do have a chance to hit him, we want to hit him, but, uh, um, you know, we can't get sucked into um, you know his game and that's what he does he, he gets guys off their game and um, so we can't allow ourselves to get sucked into that Let's stay with WBZ for complete coverage as the Bruins chase another Stanley Cup we got you covered here in Boston and in Montreal for this round two matchup against the Canadians No game at Fenway tonight Red Sox and Rays have been rained out there's now a day night doubleheader tomorrow and tonight's tickets are good for tomorrow tomorrow's game at one o'clock that is which is very important because Tonight was supposed to be Dustin Bedoya bobblehead night at Fenway. Now those bobbleheads will be handed out tomorrow at 1 o'clock to all fans in attendance, not just the kids. In ESPN's Adam Schefter's report, the Pats had former Jets and Dolphins tight end Dustin Keller in for a visit today. The 29-year-old signed with Miami last year, but grew out his knee in preseason on a direct hit, just like Blanc did. So there you go. That's sports for now. Welcome back. Thank you, my friend. You got it. CBS Evening News coming up in a moment at 6.30. And Scott Pelley joins us live from New York now with a preview. Scott? Lisa, Jack, great to be with you in Boston with the White House this week reminding colleges and universities about their responsibilities to students who have been victims of sexual assault. We're going to have a story in the broadcast tonight about Emerson College, some of the difficulties that students there say that they have had with the, with the college helping them after sexual assault. And we'll also tell you what Emerson has to say for its efforts in that area as well. We'll have that story and the rest of the world news for you on the CBS Evening News in about 10 minutes. All right, Scott, thank you. Next, Wednesday's child. His name is Nix. He's shy, but he's really nice. And he could bring a lot to a forever fan. If you received one of these letters, you are already dead. Handwritten letters poisoning by arsenic. Do not eat or drink anything. You criminal minds. Then, Patricia Arquette returns to television in a CSI event. I work crimes that start in the mind, live online. You need to see this. And play out in the real world. No, let's have it. Watch together. Get out of here. Perfect crime. It's cyber crime. An all-new CSI, right after an all-new Criminal Minds, CBS Tonight. Hey, son. Can I borrow your car? Again? How long? Not long. You're not going to do anything stupid, are you? Uh-uh. Oh. And have it home by 10. 10? Okay. Midnight. The Mercedes-Benz CLA. Dad! Available at her chambers for an affordable $30,895. The all-new Stearns & Foster collection at Bernie & Bill's is the ultimate in elegance. Built in America by certified craftsmen. The collection features silk, cashmere-infused fabric, solid brass edge vents, titanium alloy coils, Prima Cold Gel Memory Foam, and more. New England's largest selection of Stearns & Foster. Starting at only $38 a month, Bernie & Pills makes elegance affordable. For a limited time, you'll save even more with factory introductory pricing. Bernie & Pills, in and relax into child's pose. Who's got two hooves and just got a claim status update from Geico? This guy, that's who. And I just got an... Oh, no, that's Mom. Sorry. 
claim status updates just a tap away on the Geico app. It's a real estate jungle out there. That's why we've let a lion loose in your neighborhood. But there's no need to run. This lion is on your side every step of the way. Lear Realty Partners. We're one of the largest real estate firms in New England. With over 300 experienced agents, a 15-year track record, and the latest tools roaring into the market with a brand new name. Lair Realty Partners. The roar that opens more doors. Toyota is number one in value, but it gets better. Because we give you all new stylish Toyotas. Better yet, we give you great deals with the Toyota Gifts of Spring Savings Event. Receive our lowest lease on a Prius C, just $97 a month with no cost maintenance included. Or get best ever zero for 60 plus 750 bonus cash on a Prius liftback. Hurry, on May 5th, Gifts of Spring will be wrapped up. Toyota, let's go places. Tonight on Wednesday's Child, a budding artist with a chance to explore his creativity. His name is Nex, N-E-X. His heritage, Hispanic. His goal, to find a pen. He's shy, but when Nex smiles, it lights up the room. Hi, my name is Nex, I love art. How tall are you? Uh, five, three. I took Nex to the Danforth Museum in Framingham. He loves all forms of art and is gifted. I understand you sold a piece of art. Mm -hmm. What did you do? What was it? A chessboard. How long did it take you to make it? A week and a half. Really? How much is it for? Fifteen. You still have the fifteen? Mm -hmm. What did you do with the next? About magic cards. I think it's an escape for him. I think it's very therapeutic. He enjoys just doing freehand. And um, I actually discovered it about a year ago. And he's just... Evolving. What would a perfect family be for next? A mom with an older brother, so younger. So would you help? Mm-hmm. Like what? Like cleaning, putting groceries away. He is very kind, generous, um, has very gentleman traits to him, very caring, um, giving. Um, he would like to learn things from them, but them accept him and love him. Nex loves basketball. He does well in school, and his favorite subject is math. Bye, everyone. Look for the beauty in life. Which clearly he does. We often talk about how children blossom with love in their life. He has a real talent there. Well, he certainly loves it, and uh, he got a big kick out of seeing all the various artists on display. So good luck to Nex. Yes. Finds the right family. I think he's going to have a lot of fun, and so will they. Yes, you can tell he's a nice guy. For more information on NEX, you can call the Massachusetts Adoption Resource Exchange, 1-800-882-1176. Check out my website, Success Stories, at jackwilliamswednesdayschild.com. And we'll be back right after this. Time Saver Traffic is brought to you by Trusted Choice Massachusetts Independent Insurance Agents. Visit trustedchoice.com. You start your day with a cup of coffee, but if you had to stop, could you? It's definitely something that I fight with myself all the time. So, is it just a habit that's hard to break, or is there something more behind the cravings? People have come to us saying, yes, please help me. Why psychologists are taking a new look at caffeine. Tonight on WBZ News at 11. Don't miss the Bach Honda Spring into a Honda sales event at one of our two great locations. Bach Honda on the Auto Mile, Route 1 in Norwood, or Bach Honda West on Littleton Road in Westford, Mass. Drive home a brand new Honda CRV for just $99 per month. That's right, Lisa, brand new Honda CRV for only $99 per month. Two great Bach Honda locations, one legendary low Bach Honda price. I was impressed with how many great reviews they had. What makes Certipro different is that our people really care about making our customers happy. They asked what they could do to make painting an extraordinary experience for us. And they kept the game watch. We went through a personalized written certainty play. Certipro painters did a wonderful job. They respected our lifestyle and our home. It's about five-star craftsmanship and having truly satisfied customers. Schedule your free estimate at Certipro.com. Certipro painters, because painting is personal. 
Seasons change, and so do styles. What never changes is the untouchable value at My Bob's Discount Furniture. You can even find a $9.99 bedroom at another store. Give it the shape test. Is it rickety or sturdy like Louie? Are there drawer glides made of plastic? Or are they all wood with positive stock? Does theirs have hidden storage? Do they give you eight pieces for only $9.99? No phony sales, no phony gimmick. Just untouchable value. Thanks to you, 50 stores strong. Just can't seem to escape another sneeze attack? You may be muddling through allergies. Don't get caught off guard. Try new Zyrtec Dissolve Tabs. Powerful allergy relief now in a tablet that starts dissolving instantly. New Zyrtec Dissolve Tabs. At UMass Amherst, the Commonwealth's flagship campus, we stand for progress. From the discoveries in our new life science laboratories to our graduate work in renewable energy. At UMass Amherst, we don't just think about the future of Massachusetts. We help define it. Take the Ford EcoBoost Challenge and you'll choose Escape with the power and mileage of EcoBoost. And now it feels so good to lease a four-wheel drive Escape for $149 a month for competitive owners. Or get an EcoBoost powered Fusion with up to an EPA estimated 37 miles per gallon highway. Lease Fusion for $129 a month for competitive owners. Or buy with up to $27.40 total savings during the Ford EcoBoost Challenge. Wake up and start your day with Kate Merrill, David Wade, Todd Gunner, and Michelle Roberts. WBC News of the Morning, weekdays from 4.30 to 7. Coming up tonight at 11, can't start the day without that morning coffee? Me either. <laughs> now researchers are wondering, though, if that caffeine habit contributes to a health problem, and our Dr. Malika explains what they're focusing on tonight at 11. And when we're all having our evening pot of coffee tonight at about 8 o'clock, it's going to be say. just downright lousy. That's right? my favorite thing about working here, that uh, our producer <laughs> Boomer makes a pot of coffee every night. We have bonding time. Uh, we'll need it for this evening. It's cold, it's wet, the rain moving in becomes heavy, and tomorrow morning will be a very slow drive. All right. Well, well we'll wait 24 hours, and I'll say coffee's the greatest thing on earth. Exactly. exactly. It might be. <laughs> I'm still drinking it. But then again, I've got a lot of that. <laughs> that does it for us. Have a great rainy night. We'll be with you later on. Good night.